I've played Final Fantasy XIV for over 10 days now. And when I say 10 days, I mean 10 long days in game. Late nights, early mornings, every chance I can get to play this game, I play it. And you know what? I've got no regrets. I love this game. Welcome everyone to part 10 of this slightly longer, slightly better and slightly more energized, yet slightly more staggered series of my playthrough through Final Fantasy XIV. First of all, I just want to say a massive thank you. In the last video, I, I, I gracefully begged forgiveness and asked if I could stop releasing these daily because I set the precedent to release these videos every day and people were really enjoying it. But I was pushing myself to do more and more each day in game and I was worried I was going to burn out. And the support was incredible. As, as a time of recording this, there's over 500 messages and almost everyone I've read and they're all supportive and just kind and just lovely messages. And yeah, it, it was so nice to go through then. I tried to reply to a lot of them, but there are a hell of a lot there. So thank you all so much for your support. And slowing down has let me do so much more in the game. As you can see here, I was able to do things outside of the story and just show you more of this incredible and beautiful game. As always, spoiler warning from here on out, this is 10 long hours, days into the game, so there are going to be some spoilers going forward from here. So let's get into part 10. I really hope you enjoy it. So the first thing, I realised I was around level 40 Dragoon, and I hadn't done any of the Dragoon quests. So I took the level 35 and the level 40 Dragoon quests. There's no huge cutscenes ready to show you here because they're very different to the early job quests. So like 10 to 30, there's this big story, and the story kind of develops on itself with main characters and side characters and is really something different. Whereas here, you it's completely different. It was I don't know if it's different for all the job quests, but what happens is you basically have to go out and help someone. Um, this quest was called the Lance of Fury and you had to go out and help someone and it's kind of like a little mini test. And every time you did it, you'd get this message that was like the power within you stirs or something. And then you basically just go back and hand it in. And it was basically going to these people, passing these little tests, killing monsters. It was really fast. And then you go back and you get a new spell, like a new, um, like a new ability. So the story on these has completely dropped off uh, in terms of it's just take a quest, hand it in. But every time I've done it now, I've got a reward. So I'll show you what happens when you hand them in at the 40. So basically you're trying to prove yourself. So you're trying to prove that you're strong enough and that so that the the orb of the the eye of the dragoon will choose you so you hand these quests in and it kind of increases your your power your standing and every time you get this little thing your inner dragon grows stronger really really cool and it's like leveling up your crystal i think and every time you do that you get a new ability so yeah that's it now till 45 so i, I thought there would be a lot of story here because everyone keeps saying um that this guy alberic is it alberic He's like super important to the story. Uh, I guess he's not important to the Dragoon story just yet. Maybe he's just a supporting character here. Everyone was super hyped for him. Maybe this story is going to be at like Dragoon 45, 50. Or maybe it's in an expansion. I don't know. But everyone's talking about this guy in the comments. So I'm excited to see where it goes. But right now, the the job quests are just quick quick little tests for, for uh, new abilities. And then I always try and talk about how immersive and like invested I am in this game. And... I think a part of that is the little details. So I was going along this icy land doing these Dragoon quests and I saw this, this like instructor and he was clearly like training or instructing these three guys. And you can see they're like sat with no top on in like the icy cold waters. And that, that's a thing from the real world. So there are parts of the special forces or the Marines where you have these, these training camps where they go and do stuff like this, where they take them to cold parts of the country or these cold countries and they sit you in submerged water ice cold water to condition your mind or there's stories of it happening to like monks so i think it's so interesting that they've put that little detail in the middle of nowhere it's just off onto the side you could easily miss it but as soon as i saw it i stopped and just watched and yeah i think stuff like that is so cool and it just makes me like the game even more and now on to some main story <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. Yeah, so the free company was having a wedding, right? So I got an invitation and I'm pretty new to the free company. So it was very nice of them to invite me. I really did appreciate it. And they said there's basically a wedding tonight. 
you're invited, so you need to get a wedding outfit. And I was like, yeah, I look cool. I'll come like this. And they said, no, 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 you, you have to get involved properly. So <laughs> they took me to a tailor, basically, and said I had to dress up. So yeah, this, this little cat man got dressed up. So I bought a full, uh, yeah, black tie outfit. And we, we got all, we went full RP. I'm not normally into RP, right? And I just did this. I thought, I'll go for the video. I wouldn't normally do stuff like this. I'm really not normally into like heavy role play. But I thought, I'll do it for the video. And trust me, I was surprised at how good this was. I had a good, I had a great time, honestly. So yeah, let me show you what happened. It's really, really surprised me. So first we all met up and I got to meet the uh, the people that were getting married and a few of the people from the free company that I've met and some that I hadn't. And they traded me a flower and said it was compulsory that I wear this flower in my hair. So of course I I took part. And then I got flown on this little flappy Fluffy Chocobo to what could only be described as the middle of nowhere. I, I can't even tell you where this was. It was, it, yeah, I can't even, I, I couldn't go back there if you paid me. I have no idea where this was, but we flew there on this, this big two-seater bird and it was a legit instanced church setting. So we were basically in a church waiting room and then when the wedding is about to kick off, you're invited into the church instance. And I've been to a wedding and a funeral in World of Warcraft. And it's basically all the players line up in the in a church in Stormwind, for example, and you role play it all out. You know, someone will stand at the front and do a speech and then someone, you know, you'll all bow at the right time. And it's all very, very player driven. But here it's it's in the game. It's a system in the game that you can engage with and turn on. And I couldn't believe as soon it was very role play heavy. And then as soon as we sat down, this fully, fully, you know, developed cutscene with the actual players getting married was put in the game and this this really drew me back because i literally thought we were just going to sit here and role play but it's a full it's a full cutscene it's a full actual event and it took like an hour and yeah there was an actual marriage in the game and yeah this this really really shocked me i was surprised a lot and as someone who is who's i started day one of this saying i'm into really gritty and edgy games and i don't like anime style i'm gonna tell you if you get a chance, go to a wedding. They are super fun and it will shock you how good they are and how much time you can tell that Square Enix has put into allow players to express themselves and, you know, invest in their character outside of dungeons and progression. And I really, really appreciate that now. And then it went one step further. There was like a, a official bonding ceremony. Or I assume these are the equivalent of like Final Fantasy rings and they kind of bonded the two characters together. I mean, just just look at the quality of this cutscene. This is the players in the game. And obviously, I, I, like I said, I'm not massively into roleplay, but I imagine if I wanted to do a in-game wedding, this would feel super, super special. And I, hats off to Square Enix for putting something like this in the game that's completely not required, but it's obviously making a lot of people very happy. That is something I've never seen in World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft put in systems that favor progression and playtime. Whereas this, there's no need or reason for this to be in the game other than to cheer people up and make them happy. And I'm all for things like that. And then we went outside and they got on a bridal chocobo. I mean, you can't make this up. And I asked someone like, why, why is there a bridal chocobo? And it's a reward for getting married. And apparently there's loads of other rewards that you can teleport to your spouse or something. So yeah, if anybody wants to get married, hit me up in the game because, or in the comments, because I really want that man. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Unless. <laughs> and then no tricks. We actually did some main story. I have been trying to push through as much as possible. So yeah, there was a lot of really dry parts to the story, but eventually it started to pick up and here it started to get really interesting. So we finally went back to, it led you back to the Skions, the uh, Scions of the Seventh Dawn. And you go back to the little base in the, in the desert area and everyone was dead. And this was, this was mad. Every single person would be killed. And then you get this, this really cool cutscene where you find the people from the last dungeon that you didn't really know about have come hunting for you. And while you were away, they killed all your friends, including the, um, the, the 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 sylph that you had here that you rescued that it was from the the forest so yeah this was really cool i was not expecting this i thought th these guys were like going to be some it reminded me a lot of like star wars and you know the resistance that they get stronger and stronger but they always escape even though they're against like an opposing force that's stronger than them they always escape but now this just wasn't the case they got completely annihilated which which was uh, it's sad obviously but 
I like that there was a big shock factor and I definitely wasn't expecting it. And then one of the coolest, coolest cameos happened. One of the coolest things that I was not expecting. You basically go to this church and you have to, um, you know, it's kind of like bury the dead, mourn the dead. That's not the cool thing. <laughs> that sounds awful. So you go to this place and it was, you're like, why are you here? What's going on here? And then enter stage right. There was this big like cat and mouse game, this big bait where it's like, oh, he's just a guy working in a church. If you can see those things on his head in that cutscene, you know who this is if you've played Final Fantasy VII. This is Sid. Everyone who's played Final Fantasy VII would know Sid. He's in all the Final Fantasies. He has some sort of like a brief appearance in every Final Fantasy. But if you've played number seven, you'll recognize this guy instantly. I saw that thing on his head. I knew he was Sid. And I was like, Sid, What's going on, man? But you couldn't talk to him as Sid for so long. He comes along as Marquise. And then eventually, after doing a little run around for an hour, there's finally the big reveal. His name is Sid, and he's lost his memory. We need an airship. Your airship, Sid. And he's lost his airship. So yeah, the next big part of the game is looking for Sid's airship. And then we tried to clear a bit more of Path of the Dead. So we stopped at 40, we tried to get up to 50. And then we got to the boss. And so this is the woman who'd been watching you the whole way through Path of the Dead. Um, and this boss was hard. This, this, so I've gone from like very basic and beginner dungeons with very little mechanics to like one mechanic per boss. This woman had like five mechanics. You gotta jump in, jump out, avoid like big AOE clears on the floor. And we were doing okay, we got her down really low. But there's one mechanic she does that we didn't even know existed because we're all new to Palace of like, you know, floor 50 of Palace of the Dead. We hadn't done it before. And we, none of us knew this mechanic, not this one, but. What, what happens is, at a certain point, she does this thing where she does a massive AOE. And if anyone's caught in the AOE, it lights up one of these symbols on the floor. At least that's my understanding now. And if you're caught in the AOE, a symbol lights up. When she lights all of the glyphs on the floor, the game is over and you die. So we, we were managing it really well. Like, we, we would have killed her uh, out, outside of that mechanic. But then, yeah, this one just really caught people off guard. So you come in for that AOE and then instantly you've got to get out for that one. And people just people just weren't expecting it. Myself included, I wasn't expecting it. I think I, no, I didn't get out in time. So that lights up all of the glyphs uh, and it just ends the match. It just ends the round and yeah, you're just dead. <laughs> but I got to be honest, that was, that was rough, but I'm so, so happy to see like difficult mechanics because obviously I played World of Warcraft for years and the best thing they do I mean the, the one thing they do really well is high-end mythic dungeons and raids and they can choreograph really good fights and to see that there's something in Final Fantasy that's as good that's that's on par with a World of Warcraft dungeon being honest that is really on par just a cluster of mechanics that are challenging that you need to learn and overcome as a team is it makes me know that there's some challenging progression style content at the end, which which I really like. So yeah, although we died, this was really good to see. And then a few people have been telling me that with achievement points, you can go and buy stuff. So yeah, I didn't know this existed. So I went to this uh, this person in Gridania, who you can trade your achievements. So as you do your achievements and you tick them off, you get currency and then you can trade them in for items. So it looks like mostly what you get is minions, mounts, things like that. So I had about nine nine points that I could spend. So I bought a minion and I bought some barding for my chocobo. Oh no, no, I got a mount. I got a mount and a barding, that's what I got. And then I went to try them out. So firstly, I got this really cool hand. This is so, so cool. The, the mounts in this game, I think I say it in a lot of videos, but the mounts are a level above what I expected because I think one thing that, oh, World of Warcraft, one thing that I used to see a lot in World of Warcraft is reskins, recolors, and reframes. So you would frame a horse, and then there would be a hundred different mounts using that horse frame. So you would sit on the horse the same, the horse would run the same, but it would have like armor or scales, or it would actually be a lizard, but it ran like a horse. And that's, that's what they did with their mounts. They would they'd make a dragon mount, but there'd be 50 dragon mounts, different colors, different sizes, somebody muscly but they'd all run off the same skeleton. So it never felt like a unique mount. Whereas like this mount alone is completely unique. How you ride it, how it holds you, like the skeleton of it, everything is designed for this mount. So, I mean, there might be others like it, but it's just nice to see something completely different to what I've already got, which is the Chocobo. So yeah, huge fan of this and I'm really excited to see. I've seen some really cool mounts so far, so I'm really excited to see more. And then, although they don't make it into all the videos, 
every day I go on my uh, my gladiator and I put him in the daily roulette so he gets a little bit of experience every day but I mainly play my dragoon for the story and everything else so every day my gladiator has been getting a little bit stronger and yeah the gain in those levels and he's at 30 that's right so we can take him up to paladin but to do that we need to get him up to speed on the gladiator quests because like I say he's literally just been um, roulette boy for the last few days <laughs> so yeah I'll show you some of the gladiator story leading up to the paladin quest as well so the big player in the in the paladin in the gladiator story it's Aldis Aldis was a gladiator back in the day one of the best gladiators and he fought alongside somebody else this other person there was some gambling and some treachery going on and they had a big disagreement and all of the problems are caused now by this other gladiator his um his friend from back in the Colosseum and he sends all these people after you and yeah this is the guy here and this is where it all starts to get interesting because he has people that work for him and he's hunting you down and every quest you take involves these people ambushing you so I think I showed in like episode seven or something and we got ambushed in a bar and that was his his minions his troops doing it so yeah that's kind of the story for the gladiator and at level 30, it all ties up where he gets captured by this guy and you have to go and rescue him. So you work with Malia, Malia who's the, the leader of the Gladiator Guild, to go and rescue Aldis, who was captured by his old partner. And yeah, the, I'd say if I was to rank the Lancer and the Gladiator, the first 30 levels, uh, the Lancer story is so much better. The Lancer story is, is really, really good. I loved it. The Gladiator is a lot drier because you find all this story out at level 25 and 30. So, yeah, you really don't get the bigger picture right until the end. So you are really seeing the only, the, the best bits, really. The only bits that, that uh, I've recorded a lot of the story, but this was kind of the, the main big story was at the end. Uh, and then you have this epic fight on the bridge. It's your men. And woman versus uh, their people so yeah this was a really cool fight it was like gladiator v gladiator uh, all because of this this dude here and then if you've seen the episode where we become a dragoon you know how it ended right well look how this one ends <laughs> so yeah the lancer story ended with the guy falling off a cliff and this one ends exactly the same way he threw himself off the off the cliff off the uh off the building so do all the stories end with people throwing themselves off buildings or have I just got really, <laughs> is this a massive coincidence? Because <laughs> both of the evil people have jumped off of buildings now. Um, but yeah, that was the end of the Gladiator quest. Uh, what 1 to 25 Gladiator is pretty dull. 25 and 30 is amazing. That that's, that's what I would say here. I really, really like the ending here. It's not until like late 25, 30, you feel like a Gladiator, I'd say. And then you get introduced to like the Paladin Order and it's basically um, the Paladins are like this noble and they're, they're protectors but you are allowed to work as a free Paladin so you have all the rank and rights of a Paladin but you're free to do what you want rather than be a, a loyal protector. So you have to go here and you have to light this Brazier and then you have to fight some undead monsters and burn the undead bodies. As you're on your trial you get um, ambushed by a actual paladin who's this guy here and then your new friend gives you a paladin crystal as a as a thank you and it turns out he's not the nicest guy I'm still like bang level 30 so I really don't know where this story goes or how it works out but yeah this this gift of the paladin crystal wasn't um, a friendly thing apparently there was some treachery here so I'm looking forward to see where this goes but yeah, once you hand it in, you get the, uh, the Paladin Crystal, and that's your Paladin class unlocked. I'm going to be honest again, unlocking the Dragoon was so much better. But I think this story hopefully is going to open itself up, because we, you still don't know much about the Paladin Order or the Paladins. What I've shown you here, like the five minutes, is really just five minutes in game. There's, there really wasn't much to becoming a Paladin. So yeah, hopefully this story does progress, and as it does, I will show you probably alongside the Dragoon and see where that goes. But yeah, that's it. We're a paladin now. And yeah, I'm probably going to wrap this one up here, guys. I think we're pushing like 20 minutes. I have tried to make this longer because obviously we're not getting the daily uploads anymore. So hopefully you don't mind waiting a little longer for more, more in one video. Um, 
everyone has been super supportive when I said that I wanted to move away from daily uploads and it has really helped. There's been days where I've just sat there. Um, like last night, I think I spent like three hours doing nothing productive and I didn't feel bad because I was like, oh, I need to get a video out tomorrow. So it, it's really helped my enjoyment of the game stay up. And it, yeah, it's, it's really, really nice to have that little bit more time. Last weekend as well, I did a stream on YouTube and we did some like live Golden Saucer event, which was really fun. This weekend, I want to try streaming on Twitch to see what that's like. I'm either going to stream straight after this tonight or tomorrow. So I'd love it if you could follow me on Twitch and we'll just hang out there and see what it's like. It's probably going to be like some, some leveling, crafting, maybe some at the MSQ. But I'd love to see you there and just have a chat and just see what it's like on Twitch compared to YouTube. I'd love it if you could follow me. I'll link my Twitch stream down in the comments and in the description. It is just Medieval Marty on Twitch. So I would love to see you there. Hopefully we'll have a good time. Take care, everyone. And I'll hopefully see you and chat to you over the weekend. Catch you in the next one. Bye.